the acting Secret Service director is standing before the United States Senate, Ronald Rowe. Ronald Rowe is a slight bit better than Kim Cheadle, but not much. He presented himself with a fair amount of humility right at the beginning of the hearing. I was watching most of this, but very quickly he became smug and arrogant. Not as smug and arrogant as Kim Cheadle, but smug, arrogant, defiant, argumentative, and frankly, deflecting. At one point, blaming local authorities, to which even I said, what in the hell are you talking about? Everyone that has studied anything about any of this knows that the Secret Service is the one and only point individual or agency with anything doing having to do with the former president, anything having to do with the presidential candidate. And by the way, we misspoke earlier, and I want to correct that. I should have caught it, but I didn't. That... um, When Homeland Security was created, the Secret Service was transferred from the Treasury Department to the Homeland Security Department. Which are I thought they moved to the the War Department. (laughs) I don't think that I think that's called the Peace Department during the Joe Biden administration. So many people are pointing to that as the source of some of the issues involving the Secret Service that uh, they're under the umbrella of Alejandro Mayorkas. In the meantime, Senator Josh Hawley was a little annoyed at Ronald Rowe today in a heated exchange. This is about three minutes, but it's worth your listen uh, because Josh Hawley, I think, speaks for many in the United States of America when he's had a belly full of some of the excuse making on the part of the Secret Service. Let me ask you this. Who was the lead site agent who made the decision to leave the AGR building completely outside of the security perimeter. Who was that? Senator, I cannot give you that name. This person is operational. They're still doing investigations. They're still... Okay, first off, this is... And Josh Hawley's going to get upset about this, too, and I'm getting upset about it just listening to this dude. This is ridiculous. This is the United States of America. There is nothing that this Secret Service agent is doing that would prevent him from being named or her being named. Why are they not being named? Because they don't want to be blamed. Why is that person not unemployed? Well, they're about to get into that. So during protective visits, have they been relieved of duty? Senator, uh, they have not I know been relieved name, of by duty. The way. Why have they not been relieved of duty? They are still cooperating, not only being interviewed by the FBI, but also by our Office of Professional Responsibility. And uh, we will let the fact... There is zero that they could do... With regard, just like Kimberly Cheadle, there is nothing that can be discovered about what happened. If we are to believe, and once again, I don't necessarily know that I believe anything about this situation. I'm open to some Secret Service agent. I'm, I'm open to any conversation that anyone wants to have about what happened to Donald Trump and what happened to the United States of America on July 13th. But after 17 days... There is nothing that the individual decision maker on site could say that would prevent him from losing his job. Tell me what that person could say to prevent them from losing their job. And there's zero that you can't get from them after you fire them that you can get from them before you fire them. Right? It can't just be that the director of the Secret Service gets her butt canned and goes off to a cushy retirement plan, and then we go on as if nothing happened. There were functional and fundamental. If we believe that they weren't a part of it, which I'm going to try to believe for as long as I possibly can, but if we're to believe that they weren't a part of it, then there were fundamental and functional mistakes made that have to be dissected and corrected now. Not tomorrow, not after breakfast, now. We need that on our, uh, we need that on our, on our hotkeys. That's a, well, that's a Shawshank Redemption. You, Shawshank Redemption? Yeah. That's the warden. He wants to find Andy Dufresne. You he's know, in when, the poop tunnel. Yeah. He's in the, he's in the, yeah. He crawled through a 500 yards of poop. Sewage line. Came out clean on the other that's side. That's how bad he wanted out of jail. He wanted out of jail, boy. I don't blame him. He had some money to go get. Uh, That said, the warden says, after they discover, you know, 
he tunneled out behind Rita Hayworth, and then eventually, I think Rita Hayworth became Raquel Welch. I want him found, not tomorrow, not after. Ba- so why has this guy not been fired? Why has this woman not been fired? It can't just be the director. Whomever was making the decisions on the ground made such fundamental mistakes that they allowed. Just imagine for a minute that God's hand was not involved. The person that made the decision not to include that building within the perimeter, they killed Donald Trump. Uh, For a moment, let's imagine that God's hand wasn't there. For a moment, let's imagine that Donald Trump didn't turn his head. For a moment, God forbid we imagine this, but we're going to do it. Let's imagine that Donald Trump is dead. The person that made those decisions killed Donald Trump, as did the director of the SS, as did many of the. So why has that person not been fired? They did nothing to save the life of Donald Trump. They made decisions that put him in danger. You can't make that mistake. I understand that the bad guys have to be right only once and the good guys have to be right 100% of the time. I fully get that. But it doesn't seem like the good guys are making much effort to be right. When he says, well, it was a failure of imagination, what he means is we were lazy. We were just sitting back. We didn't think anything would happen. We were just going through the motions. That's exactly what he means. And somebody needs to be fired as a result and not just the director. Heads need to roll. They're being relieved of duty. Senator, uh, they have not been relieved name, of duty. I know their name, by the way. Why have they not been relieved of duty? They are still cooperating, not only being interviewed by the FBI, but also by our Office of Professional Responsibility. And uh, we will let the facts of uh, the mission assurance and any further investigations play out. Is it, isn't the fact that a former president was shot, that a good American is dead, that other Americans were critically wounded, isn't that enough mission failure for you to say that the person who decided that that building should not be in the security perimeter probably ought to be stepped down? Senator, I think you're using the word decided, and I think we need to allow the the investigation play out to include... So who, okay. well, wait, wait, wait. Oh, well, I'll let Josh get exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm getting in front of Senator Hawley. So who did, who, who did make the decision then? If it wasn't the lead uh, site agent, who made the decision not to put that in the security perimeter? Senator, you're zeroing in on one particular agent. I want to find out exactly yeah. what was the entire decision process. So I think yeah. I want to be neutral and make sure that we get to the bottom of it and interview everybody in order to determine if there was. Well, yeah. I mean, what? So you notice how, I mean, this, look, I, I came in today wanting to try to defend this guy. Not defend him in the sense that I know what he's all about, but just try to get, not defend him. Let me correct that. I want to try to give this person the benefit of the doubt. And it is impossible to give him the benefit of the doubt during this exchange. Yeah, we want to boil it down to who made the decision that ultimately led to an individual taking a shot at the president, a former president of the United States brain. And but for the hand of God, he would have succeeded. Whoever made the decision got the president shot effectively. Well, he was shot, killed effectively. Were it not for a miracle? And you're here to tell me that you're not here to lay blame on those decision makers? You want to look more broadly? What? It sounds to me like you're wanting desperately to blame local and state police. That's what I'm saying. On one particular agent, I want to find out exactly what was the entire decision process. So I think I want to be neutral and make sure that we get to the bottom of it and interview everybody in order to determine if there was more than one person who perhaps exercised bad judgment. Well, sure. My question is, why don't you relieve everybody of duty who made bad judgment? So, yeah, you're right. I am zeroing in on somebody. I'm trying to find somebody who's accountable here. And we so will. you're telling me that the person who made the decision not to include this in the perimeter has not been relieved of duty. What about the person who's in charge of the interoperability of radio frequencies between local law enforcement and, and Secret Service? Has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, Senator, because interoperability is a challenge, uh, is a greater challenge than just one person. On that day, we had a counterpart system. Uh, it failed. 
As the person who decided, who made the decision to send Donald Trump onto stage knowing that you had a security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? No, sir, they haven't. Because... As the person who decided not to pull the former president off of stage when you knew that, in your words, the locals were working a serious security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, sir. Again, I refer you back to my original answer that we are investigating this through a mission assurance and as opposed to zeroing in on one what more do you need to investigate to, to know exactly what, the what decision more do you need to investigate was? to know that there were critical enough failures that some individuals ought to be held accountable i mean what more do you need to know what i need to know is exactly what happened and i need my investigators to do their job and i cannot a lot of people didn't do their i cannot jobs. put my thumb on the scale otherwise what do you mean put your thumb the on the objective, scale? The obje you're asking me, Senator, to completely make a rush to judgment about somebody failing. I acknowledge this was a failure of the Is Secret it not Service. prima facie that somebody has failed? A former president was sir, shot. Sir, this could have been our Texas School Book Depository. I have lost sleep over that for the last 17 days, been just like you have. somebody to and hold I will tell you, Senator. I will tell you, Senator, that I will not rush to judgment, that people will be held accountable, and I will do so with integrity and not rush to judgment and put people I can't unfairly believe that you persecuted. Are, I, unfairly persecuted? Unfairly, we people sir. Who are we dead. have to be able to have a proper investigation. What is this jackhole talking about? Oh, he decides that he's going to get tough? You're going to get tough? 17 days ago, you effectively allowed a candidate for president of the United States, a former president, to have his brains blown out. And you're going to get tough, unfairly prosecuted. What are you talking about, dude? Oh, this is awful. You know, and this is, you're talking to a guy who wanted to walk in here and try to treat this fellow with the benefit of the doubt. That maybe he's new eyeballs. Oh, my goodness gracious. These, the, the unifying thread that we're all frustrated with is almost universal. The unifying thread of smugness and condescension and arrogance and corruption and incompetence. But it is the it is the smug and arrogant attitude that we see with the Secret Service, with the FBI, with the CIA, as we watch these eight with Homeland Security, with Border Patrol. These federal agencies, these bureaucrats that are failing us with regularity and when questioned about their failures, their failures, and this is the ultimate failure, allowing a shot to the head to be taken, multiple shots to the head to be taken against a former president, and you have the audacity to get angry? When you're yelled at, you sit there and you take it. You deserve every bit of it. You are now the face of an agency that failed the United States of America. And you refuse to fire people because you don't want them to be treated unfairly? What about Donald Trump? What about the American people? It is this smug, holier-than-thou attitude. This FBI, CIA, the, the, all of them. ATF, these federal aid, and, I, and I'm sorry if, if some of you field folk are getting included in, all of the, included in all of this, and I understand that there are many good agents within the Secret Service. I get that. But you, if you're a good agent within the FBI, if you're a part of one of these departments, one of these alphabet soups, NSA, CIA, ATF, FBI, Secret Service, if you're a good agent, then you're not bothered by what I'm saying. 
that your bosses, your superiors have this holier than thou, how dare you question me attitude that makes the American people look at them as, what in the hell world are you living in? That you bring this attitude with you 17 days after the ultimate failure of your department. More coming up. I know I'm yelly today. I, I apologize to those of you who don't like yelly, Matt. Super Talk 99.7 WTN.